Hello and welcome to this uh, video. So today we are going to learn the procedures, the history, and sample calculations on art. Now, uh, it was already uh, introduced arcs as structural element during our first meeting wherein arc has a lot of advantage as structural element. So before we are going to have the calculation, we are going to visit, I'm going to visit you to a session. This is actually a session on a PICE webinar for students and the speaker is uh, engineer Tony Pimentel. So he will talk on um, a brief history on the column frame system wherein it has eventually evolved into arcs. Here's the video. Let's start with the history. Uh, empires usually have the, uh, the ability to build the uh, Good structures, you know. So we we can see the development mostly on uh, on their empires. So the longest empire and the greatest empire would be the Egyptian Empire from the Hyksos Empire. So we can see here that their major contribution in construction would be the stone column beam system. Especially uh, when you see that the much much of their uh, construction uh, capability or sustainability is. Is that more of the materials are just beside them, so like 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 in this mountain? All the materials built in this uh, building came from that mountain. So, meron the project management involved, and they also invented the brick, and they have uh, they have seen that the uh, the clay would be hardened enough, fire and and using straw. So they have built these big and magnanimous uh, structures that we have, we are seeing right now. The next empire that we, we can take a look at is the Babylonian Empire. Same, you know, same contribution because uh, the empire lasted only about 700 uh, years. So like, not like the Egyptians, it lasted about 1,800 years. So they have long uh, reigned long. So they have a lot of structures, but uh, basically all of those are stones. The next empire now is the Babylonian uh, Empire. They use the same uh, the same concept in building uh, their palaces and their projects using stone column beam and bricks. We can see here the ziggurat, you now made of bricks and stone combination, bricks and stone that that would tower high up to almost thirty story high. So we can see here the ingenuity of the uh, Unan Tao before that they, they could uh, build this kind of Beautiful, beautiful palaces. The next empire that uh, you look at is the Middle Persian Empire. It lasted only a few, less than 100 years. So they also continue the construction style or system using stone column and brick material. This one, uh, this, this picture behind me is the uh, Great Persepolis in uh, Iran, where most of the roof were, were made of timber, it was destroyed by Alexander the Great to the, uh, in his last reign during uh, the invasion of the Medio, Medio Persia Empire. Now comes the Greek, the Greek Empire. Now the Greek Empire still used the stone column beam system. But much more attention now with the, the aesthetics part of in architecture. So they have developed one beautiful uh, concept, which is proportion and geometry. So beautiful are the, the, the structures of these Greek, uh, Greek architects that uh, we have now considered much, when you, when you study architecture, you might be focusing much more on the Greek architecture because of aesthetics. Next came the Roman Empire, which uh, extended more on the uh, capability of the stone column beam system. And of course, embraced the Hellenistic view of uh, architecture, primarily on geometry and proportion. And in addition to that, they developed one of the uh, most uh, uh, 
uh, innovative uh, materials, which is concrete. Now they can build more strong structures using this element, concrete. And one of the most interesting uh, uh, innovations that they, they made is the use of arches. It's only in this time that we can see a lot of Roman uh, ruins that they use a lot of arches, not only on two-dimensional uh, view, but also on a three-dimensional system. You have seen this, uh, you see in, in the uh, structure, the pan Pantheon, which is made of concrete shell. So they have developed much more, no? because they reign almost 700 years, so they have developed much uh, a good understanding of the structure, especially the arches. You know, they can span longer, they can do um, wider spaces, not like the Egyptians or the uh, Medo Persians or the Babylonians who have limited, limited area or limited span on the beam. Now the Romans extended it, uh, and, uh, I mean, it stretched more on this concept using the arch, which is uh, unfortunately we are not using now. So uh, maybe we have, we have to look uh, back on this kind of system, which now I'm promoting actually. So they have developed or they have contributed this concrete and 2D and 3D shell system. The arts for the 2D and shell for the three-dimensional system. Then came the Ottoman Empire, lasted uh, 700 years also. Much more, they have uh, specialized now on long span structures. One is in uh, Hagia Sophia in Turkey. And you can enter it, it's almost 180 meters long, wide enough. So much of their, uh, much of their structures are made, are used for mosques. So you can see even here in the Philippines that the mosque, you know, they use this kind of system, a 3D, 3D spatial arc or this uh, shell, shell system. One is in Morocco, one is in Spain. So we can see a lot, a lot. They use a lot of uh, these arches. Actually, this arch is really uh, is a very good uh, earthquake resistant structure. I don't know why uh, they remove it. Probably because of architecture. So one one driving force here is architecture itself. So maybe we could uh, recommend. So much more of my work now are focusing on this because they have they have survived a lot of earthquakes, especially in Turkey. One survived for almost seven hundred years. A good system would last. Then in the Byzantium or medieval area, they have developed more of a 2D and a 3D shell system, which they call the vaulting, vaulting of arches. Now this is quite different because uh, 3D is uh, three-dimensional, but this one is uh, um, linear at most, no? So there's a frame on the short direction, on the transverse direction. They have also developed an arch action along the longitudinal. So it's a very, very fine. So most of the churches, especially in uh, England, France, in Italy, so the, the, uh, mostly on the on the eastern, uh, eastern, uh, western side, Britain and uh, France, and some of them in Spain, use this vaulting system. A very good, very good system for, especially for cathedrals. Next came in the 1800. Okay, so I hope I hope you you've learned from that inter interesting trivia. So it was mentioned that uh, from a Rome Roman Empire up to the medieval times or medieval area, art is of potential not only on architecture but significantly on structural element or structural as structural member so long span uh, structures could have not been uh, innovated because or by uh, the arc the potential of the arc action of the structural element so nowadays it it, it was vanishing actually because of the architecture perhaps they they do not prefer the the dome or arc in in the modern times because usually 
you may uh, conclude that an ark is uh, just for a uh, church structure but actually it was uh, already used in big domes like uh, the Cuneta Astrodome in Cubao, Quezon City or any uh, dome that are present now. Okay, so it was already, it was also extended in uh, bridge structures, okay, and uh, was innovated to be a shell structure also. So those are the brief history of the art and it is really of potential as structural element. And uh, basically, by the word, uh, the term itself, three-hinge arc, it is characterized by uh, an arc member, and this arc member is supported both ends by a pin that is uh, pin connected or fixed at one side, and the other is a pin connection, and it is free to move horizontally by a roller. And it is usually separated by a hinge at the middle in order to, of course, break the long span. Okay. And as you know, that the reverse curve is intentionally for a uh, minimized action of the bending and minimized action of the, of the shear. Okay. Usually, this arc is more on actual loading so instead of a bending because it was already bended against the action of bending therefore the bending stress is at minimal as well as the shear effect okay so this is more on a normal stress actually or it is more on a compressive type of actual force so the analysis in a three hinge arc is very simple. We'll just have to use bisection method and then treat this as a whole in order to solve first for our reaction. As we can see here, the free body diagram would tell us that there are three unknowns here, or practically if this is a pin connection, there will be four. And by separating these two, we'll have to deal with an internal reaction here. Say if this is point C, there will be CY and CX here, which is also equal to CY and CX there. Okay, so I think uh, let us correct this. I, it should be a pin connection here to uh, obtain determinacy here. So there should also have a reaction there and this is also pin connected here that is why it is called three hinge arc and by this setup your structure is determinate meaning it can be solved by the three equilibrium equation available so the treatment here is just treat this as a whole and then separate this and treat a left portion or a right portion applying the three equilibrium equations and after applying this we get these values and then anything within your three inch arc will be solved okay so usually the slope of any point on this arc could be solved by the parabolic relations between the horizontal and the vertical distances and all we have to remember is the equation of the parabola and the equation of the parabola is just to imagine a uh, x and y axis here so when your x is bending and the touching here the uh, point of origin meaning x is bended here your equation is just square your x because x here has bended upwards and then equate it to 4ay and if we have a downwards concave of the curve we will just have to indicate it as negative okay so if you notice y here is on the first degree 
and your x is on the second degree. So meaning, whatever the axis is bended, that will be squared. Same true with the y, but this time the y is bended. If the y is bended towards the right, we have this equation. So notice that your y is bended now and y is squared. And if your y is bended towards along the left, we have this equation. So y is again squared because y is bended. This time left, we indicate negative for that. So these are the, just the principles that you need to know. And of course, we need to recall also our knowledge in method of joints and method of sections in order to deal with problems on three hinge arc. So with this, let us uh, start with the problems that will be posted on the next video. So thank you for listening and good day.